so there's a big question, right? Heading into the fall, we're going to see more hearings, apparently, from the January 6th committee before the midterms about just what what's the effect politically, right? Not the most important part of these hearings, but an important part. What might it be of showcasing Republican after Republican reaffirming that what Donald Trump did was unacceptable? It's something I talked about with late night host Stephen Colbert after yesterday's hearing. What do you think that the aggregate impact of this will be, all this information presented in a clear way uh, and in a calm way, will have politically? And I don't mean necessarily the horse race. I mean on the Republican Party and their fealty to Donald Trump. On the latter question, I think that they have done... I mean, I am not the target audience here, so I don't want to sort of project... But that's clear that they, they have yeah. a target audience. Yeah, and they do. I think... Here's what I think. I think his political power in the Republican Party is actually waning a little bit. Doesn't mean he's not the front runner. He is. Doesn't mean that he is not the most likely person to be the nominee. He, he is definitely the most likely person to be the nominee. And in fact, if you asked me to bet against him or the field, I'd probably take him over the field. But the baggage here, they, they have done a very good job of draping this baggage around his neck. And even if you're a guy who thinks Donald Trump was great and you hate the libs and you hate the Democratic Party and you want to win, you got to have it in your head right now of like, man, that's all, he's got a lot of baggage. Do we want someone with that much baggage? And I think that does create a bit of a crack and a, big, a bit of an opening. Someone who's actually been tracking all this is Sarah Longwell, publisher of The Bulwark, host of the Focus Group podcast, and she joins me now. Sarah, you've been doing these focus groups uh, throughout the hearings. Uh, who are the folks in the focus group and what have you been hearing as these hearings have progressed? So they are all 2020 Trump voters. So they are people who have supported Donald Trump. And what's been so interesting, we've done nine focus groups of Trump voters since these hearings began. And in four of them, zero of the Republicans in the groups wanted to see Trump run again in 2024. And that is a sort of stunning turnaround from what we were hearing prior to the January 6th hearings, where you would usually get about half the group that would want to see Donald Trump running again in 2024. And now you're getting, you know, either zero or one or two people. And the reasons that you just mentioned in that clip are exactly the reasons why. They are not sure that he can win. They talk about baggage a lot. Um, they are just, you know, they, they are very keen on beating Joe Biden and seeing Republicans gain control. And so they kind of do this armchair political analysis where they say, I don't know, I just think too many people hate him and he's got so much baggage. Um, and so, you know, I think that, that what you said there about uh, it waning is, is true. But let me be clear about something. They don't dislike Donald Trump, and they will absolutely right, right. No, vote for Donald Trump if he is the nominee. They still like him. It's a pure uh, political calculation that they're making. Yeah, I, I mean, that's very clear. And I think, and also, I don't think there's much moral umbrage about the fact that, like, he tried to get his vice president killed. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not seeing anyone, like, caring that much about that as a, as a first-order ethical question. But this on this political thing, I mean, the, the way that I think about it is, in 2020, this question of electability really loomed enormously large over Democratic primary voters. And you saw a discussion all the time vis-a-vis -vis Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, uh, particularly those two, you know, would they be electable compared to Joe Biden? And it, it, I think, ultimately really helped Joe Biden secure the nomination, that, that calculation. How much do you think Republicans are thinking in that mode and how much... Can you imagine that coming to play if there is, in fact, a contested primary, which it looks like there will be? Yeah, well, this is like a very key point, because uh, it's not that these Republican voters are watching the January 6th hearings and think, oh, I'm now persuaded that I don't like Donald, Donald Trump, right? It's the, it's the ambi ambient noise of all of it, the accumulation that's sort of diminishing um, their sense that he can potentially win. But the other major factor is that there are a bunch of other candidates that they like. They're very enthusiastic about Ron DeSantis. They see him, they say it all the time. He's like Trump, he's a fighter, but without the baggage. They really like Christy Nome. They think that there are a lot of Republican stars who are better suited to beat Joe Biden, um, and they really want to win. That's coming through uh, just loud and clear in these groups. So I guess my deeper question, I think this is going to be kind of a frustrating answer, is like, they, they're not getting, like, they're not like, wow, that was a really bad thing that happened, and it was bad for American democracy. I mean, I, I, the, the, the degree to which 
the committee has really tried to be like, hey, guys, listen to fellow Republicans. Listen to that Republican, that Republican, this other Republican. It, here are trusted messengers. My sense is like that's basically for naught with these folks. But what have you found? Uh, it is for naught. I mean, they have done um, an amazing job. But here's the thing. They're not watching the hearings and they are living in their own uh, media right, ecosystems. Yeah, yeah. And, and But this is where it, it does get complicated because it is breaking through in the sense that the committee has done such a good job that these Republican actors, the, the Trump actors, have sort of had to go into that media ecosystem to defend themselves. And so so it breaks through. And but but the but the way that these guys talk about it in the focus groups is just like they talked about impeachment. It's a dog and pony show. It's a witch hunt. Right. Um, they're they're just out to get get um, get Trump. And the, and the other thing that they do is like a very healthy case of what about ism. Black Lives Matter. What about that? Why are they blaming us? Yeah. And so that's sort of how they seem to rationalize it. Um, that all checks out, Sarah Longwell. I've, I've learned a lot uh, from, from your writing on these focus groups, so, so I hope you keep it up. Thank you very much.